What are your favorite things to do when you study? How much help do these habits or practices give you in your studies? This video deals with strategies-based instruction. Here, we will talk about many different strategies that are key to learner autonomy in language learning. Strategies that foster memory and cognition, metacognition, or students' ability to understand their own thinking and learning processes, effective strategies, social strategies, and many more. As we seek to make the language classroom an effective milieu for learning, it has become increasingly apparent that teaching learners how to learn is crucial. That is according to Brown in 2006. The first group of strategies is called direct strategies. Under the direct strategies, we have memory, cognitive, and compensation strategies. Let us tackle the memory strategies first. The first strategy is creating mental linkages. There are three ways of achieving that. First is grouping. Second is associating or elaborating. And third, placing new words into a context. Grouping. By grouping each data point into a larger whole, you can improve the amount of information you can remember. Associating or elaborating. It is a very powerful memory strategy that allows the brain to connect something it's already familiar with to something new that it is not familiar with. By connecting the unfamiliar to the familiar, the brain more easily is able to learn and remember the unfamiliar. Select a vivid image that represents a brain or a title of the majority of objects or keywords to be remembered. Placing new words into a context. Using acronyms is a kind of placing new words into a context in order to remember them better. Applying images and sounds. The first one is using imagery. Next is semantic mapping. Semantic mapping is a strategy for graphically representing concepts. A semantic word map allows students to conceptually explore their knowledge of a new word by mapping it with other related words or phrases similar in meaning to the new word. Next is using keywords. It is a valuable technique used to memorize the meaning behind vocabulary words. And lastly, representing sounds in memory. This strategy helps learners remember what they hear by making auditory rather than visual representations of sounds. The next strategy is reviewing well. This is reviewing in carefully spaced intervals, at first close together and then more widely spaced apart. This strategy might start, for example, with a review 10 minutes after the initial learning, then 20 minutes later, an hour or two later, a day later, two days later, a week later, and so on. Finally, Employing action. The first type under this is using physical response or sensation. This is physically acting out a new expression, for example, going to the door, or meaningfully relating a new expression to a physical feeling or a sensation, for example, warmth. The second type is mechanical techniques. Creative but tangible activities are employed in order to remember new target language information, such as writing words on cards and moving cards from one stack to another when a word is learned, and putting different types of material in separate sections of a language learning notebook. The second set of strategies under the direct strategies is cognitive strategies. First off, under cognitive strategies is practicing. The following techniques may be done under this strategy. 
One is repeating, such as listening to something several times, rehearsing, imitating a native speaker. Two, formally practicing with sounds and writing systems, such as pronunciation or writing exercises. Three, recognizing and using formulas and patterns. Four, recombining, such as combining known elements in new ways to produce a longer sequence, as in linking one phrase with another in a whole sentence. And five, practicing naturalistically or practicing the new language in natural, realistic settings, as in participating in a conversation. The next strategy under cognitive strategies is first, receiving and sending messages such as using skimming to find out the main ideas or scanning to find specific details of interest. This helps learners understand quickly what they hear or read in the new language. Second, using resources for receiving and sending messages such as using print or non-print resources to understand incoming messages or produce outgoing messages. The next one is analyzing and reasoning. There are five techniques under this. One, reasoning deductively or using general rules and applying them to new target language situations. Two, analyzing expressions by using the definitions of different parts to understand the meaning of the whole expression. 3. Analyzing contrastively or across languages, such as comparing elements like sounds, vocabulary, grammar of the new language with elements of one's own language to find out similarities and differences. 4. Translating or converting a target language expression into the native language and vice versa. And five, transferring or applying directly knowledge of words, concepts, or structures from one language to another. The last set is creating structure for input and output. The techniques are taking notes, summarizing, and highlighting. Taking notes. This entails writing down the main idea for specific points. This strategy can involve raw notes or it can comprise a more systematic form of note taking, such as the shopping list format, the T formation, the semantic map, or the standard outline form. Summarizing. Making a summary or abstract of a longer passage. Highlighting. Using a variety of emphasis techniques such as underlining, starring, or color coding to focus on important information in a passage. We now have the compensation strategies. The first one is guessing intelligently, which are of two types using linguistic cues, and using other clues, such as context clues. The second one is overcoming limitations in speaking and writing. Under this, we have switching to the mother tongue. This entails using the mother tongue for an expression without translating it. This strategy may also include adding word endings, from the new language onto words from the mother tongue. Next is getting help. Asking someone for help or explicitly asking for the person to provide the missing expression in the target language. Using mime or gesture. Using physical motion such as mime or gesture in place of an expression to indicate the meaning. Avoiding communication partially or totally partially or totally avoiding communication when difficulties are anticipated. This strategy may involve avoiding communication in general, avoiding certain topics, avoiding specific expressions, or abandoning communication in mid-utterance. Selecting the topic. 
This involves choosing the topic of conversation in order to direct the communication to one's own interests and make sure the topic is one in which the learner has sufficient vocabulary and grammar to converse. Adjusting or approximating the message. It entails altering the message by omitting some items of information, making ideas simpler or less precise, or saying something slightly different that means almost the same thing, such as saying pencil for pen. Coining words. It is making up new words to communicate the desired idea, such as chortle, a word created by Lewis Carroll by blending chuckle and snort. And lastly, using a circumlocution or synonym. This is getting the meaning across by describing the concept, that is, circumlocution, or using a word that means the same thing, that is, synonym. We will now tackle the indirect strategies. The first set of strategies under this is metacognitive strategies. Metacognitive strategies include three strategy sets. Centering your learning, arranging and planning your learning, and evaluating your learning. Centering your learning. This set is composed of three strategies that help learners to converge their attention and energies on certain language tasks, activities, skills, or materials. The use of these strategies provides a focus for language learning. The first strategy under this set is overviewing and linking with already known material. This strategy can be accomplished in many different ways, but it is often helpful to follow three steps learning why the activity is being done, building the needed vocabulary, and making the associations. The second strategy is paying attention. It entails deciding in advance to pay attention in general to a language learning task and to ignore distractors by directed attention and to pay attention to specific aspects of the language by selective attention. The third is delaying speech production to focus on listening. Deciding in advance to delay speech production in the new language, either totally or partially, until listening comprehension skills are better developed. Arranging and planning your learning. This contains six strategies, all of which help learners to organize and plan so as to get the most out of language learning. These strategies touch many areas. Finding out about language learning. Organizing the schedule and the environment. Setting goals and objectives. Considering task purposes. Planning for tasks. Seeking chances to practice the language. Let us take the first one. Finding out about language learning. It involves making an effort to find out how language learning works by reading books and talking with other people, and then using this information to help improve one's own language learning. Organizing the schedule and the environment. This entails understanding and using conditions related to optimal learning of the new language organizing one's schedule, physical environment, and language learning notebook. Setting goals and objectives. It includes setting aims for language learning, including long-term goals, such as being able to use the language for informal conversation by the end of the year, or short-term objectives, such as finishing reading a short story by Friday. Considering task purposes. For example, listening to the radio to get the latest news on the stock exchange, reading a play for enjoyment, or speaking to the cashier to buy a train ticket, and so on. Planning tasks. This strategy includes four steps. 1. Describing the task or situation. 
Two, determining its requirements. Three, checking one's own linguistic resources. And four, determining additional language elements or functions necessary for the task or situation. Seeking chances to practice the language. This is finding opportunities to practice the new language in naturalistic situations, such as watching movies, using the second or foreign language, attending to a party where the language will be spoken, or joining an international social club. Evaluating your learning. In this set are two related strategies, both aiding the learners in checking their language performance. One strategy involves noticing and learning from errors, and the other concerns evaluating overall progress. Self-monitoring. Identifying errors and understanding or producing the new language, determining which ones are important, tracking the source of important errors, and trying to eliminate such errors. Self-evaluating. Evaluating your own progress in the new language, for instance, by checking to see whether you are reading faster and understanding more now than one month or six months ago. We now have the effective strategies. The term effective refers to emotions, attitudes, motivations, and values. It is impossible to overstate the importance of the effective factors influencing language learning. Language learners can gain control over these factors through effective strategies. The three main sets of effective strategies exist and they are lowering your anxiety, encouraging yourself, taking your emotional temperature. Let's take the first one, lowering your anxiety. Three anxiety-reducing strategies are listed here. Each has a physical component and a mental component. The first one is using progressive relaxation, deep breathing, or meditation. This refers to using the technique of alternately tensing and relaxing all of the major muscle groups in the body, as well as the muscles in the neck and the face, in order to relax, or the technique of breathing deeply from the diaphragm, or the technique of meditating by focusing on a mental image or a sound. Second is using music. This involves listening to soothing music, such as a classical concert, as a way to relax. Third is using laughter. Using laughter to relax by watching a funny movie, reading a humorous book, listening to a joke, and so on. The second set of effective strategies is encouraging yourself. This set of three strategies is often forgotten by language learners, especially those who expect encouragement mainly from other people and do not realize they can provide their own. However, the most potent encouragement may come from inside the learner. There are three strategies under this set. Self-encouragement includes making positive statements, taking risks wisely, and rewarding yourself. Let us tackle making positive statements. This entails saying or writing positive statements to oneself in order to feel more confident in learning the new language. Taking risks wisely. It is pushing oneself to take risks in a language learning situation even though there is a chance of making a mistake or looking foolish. Risks, however, must be tempered with good judgment. Rewarding yourself. This is giving oneself a valuable reward for a particularly good performance in the new language. Here are some examples of tangible rewards. Marie rewards herself for good work 
We watching your favorite TV show. Annie eats a big pizza. Ronald eats ice cream. Louise calls up a friend for a long chat. Ernie takes his family out for a relaxing drive or walk by the lake. The next set of strategies is taking your emotional temperature. The four strategies in this set help learners to assess their feelings, motivations, and attitudes, and in many cases, enable them to relate to the language tasks. Unless learners know how they are feeling and why they are feeling that way, they are less able to control their affective side. The strategies in this set are particularly helpful. For discerning negative attitudes and emotions that impede language learning progress, one, listening to your body. This is paying attention to signals given by the body. These signals may be negative, reflecting stress, tension, worry, fear, and anger, or they may be positive, indicating happiness, interests, calmness, and pleasure. Two, using a checklist. This is used to discover feelings, attitudes, and motivations concerning language learning in general, as well as concerning specific language tasks. Writing a language learning diary. Writing a diary or journal to keep track of events and feelings in the process of learning a new language. Four. Discussing your feelings with someone else, talking with another person like a teacher, friend, or relative, to discover and express feelings about language learning. The next group of strategies is social strategies. Language is a form of social behavior. It is communication, and communication occurs between and among people. Learning a language thus involves other people, and appropriate social strategies are very important in this process. There are three sets under this group of strategies: one, asking questions; two, cooperating with others; three, empathizing with others. First is asking questions. Under this set. We have two strategies: asking questions for clarification or verification, and asking for a correction. Let us take the first strategy: asking questions for clarification or verification. This entails asking the speaker to repeat, paraphrase, explain, slow down, or give examples. Asking if a specific utterance is correct, or if a rule fits a particular case. Paraphrasing or repeating to get feedback on whether something is correct. The second strategy is asking for correction. This involves asking someone for correction in a conversation. This strategy most often occurs in conversation. But may also be applied to writing. The second set of strategies under social strategies is cooperating with others. This set has two strategies that involve interacting with one or more people to improve language skills. They are cooperating with peers and cooperating with proficient users of the new language. These strategies are the basis of cooperative language learning, which not only increases learners' language performance but also enhances self-worth and social acceptance. Let us tackle the first one: cooperating with peers. This strategy can involve a regular learning partner or a temporary pair or small group. This strategy frequently involves controlling impulses toward competitiveness and rivalry. The second one 
is cooperating with proficient users of the language. This strategy involves working with native speakers or other proficient users of the new language, usually outside of the language classroom. The third strategy set is empathizing with others. Empathy can be developed more easily when language learners use these two strategies. 1. Developing cultural understanding. This involves trying to empathize with another person through learning about the culture and trying to understand the other person's relation to that culture. 2. Becoming aware of others' thoughts and feelings. This pertains to observing the behaviors of others as a possible expression of their thoughts and feelings, and when appropriate, asking about thoughts and feelings of others. There you have it, language learners and future language teachers. May this video enrich your understanding and resolve to becoming better at using the language and eventually teaching them to your future learners.